First of all, welcome you guys. Welcome to San Francisco. Thanks. Pretty amazing group here. Lots of collective experience. If we're just talking about CrossFit Games alone, not your lives before being collegiate athletes and such, but how many collective years have you guys been to the game? This is my seventh year. I have four individual, one team. Five. Four. And you're 17 years old, so you started when you were 12. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, nine. Nine. So, nine, so seven, what's six, happened, six, I think one of the things that we can frame this conversation about is that years. As, as a group, no one is working harder than CrossFit athletes. People are working as hard. There are some high level skiers and some, thing, some, some of the groups we see, but no one is working as hard. We're seeing you guys work at the margins of what's possible as humans. And what was possible next last year is, is obsolete next year. I mean, you know, the volumes that you guys are handling and the loads and the weights and the speeds and the skills, it's pretty remarkable. I've, I've almost kind of developed in the opposite way where I started, I overloaded myself with volume. And, and I think just because I was kind of behind the curve, like you, I don't know if you started and were already pretty close to being a games level athlete, I was way behind. And so I, my mentality was like, all right, I've got to do more and more and more to try to catch up to everybody. And so I would do Metcons all day, seven days a week. And then eventually now it's kind of transitioned to smarter, not harder style of training where it's just different, uh, smaller pieces of intensity and uh, not quite as much volume as it was before. I started more just as simply to get more fit and just take classes an hour a day. And then I found out I was, it was something I was gifted at. And so then, <laughs> uh, like 2012, 2013, kind of like what you said, it was very, very high volume. Um, and then over the past few years, it's been maybe a little less volume, but just training smarter, being more aware of my body, and uh, realizing that it's more than just a sport. It's uh, helping everyday athletes get more fit and so I make it a point to jump into our class at my gym every day and do the same thing that everybody else is doing and I want to do that forever so I think it's just kind of like a good way to live by an example. So tell me, you've been there Ben, you've been at the games, this will be your ninth game. This will be my tenth. Tenth, tenth year at the games. What are the big shifts in your brain over the last ten years? That's been a huge huge change from when I started to where we are now. I mean, each year it's been getting progressively uh, more and more difficult to maintain the level of fitness that, that all the other games athletes are at. But I know that when I started, it was, I would work out and I would rest a day. I would work out and I would rest a day. And I just couldn't handle the intensity of the workouts. Like it took me a long time to be able to build that capacity up. And now we're working out three, four times a day consistently, you know, taking one one rest day a week. From the outside, when I turn on the games, I'm blown away. And I know the strongest men and the strongest women on the planet. I know the fittest people on the planet. And yet I watch what you guys do. And I'm like, these people are mutants. I don't have any relationship, right? But I, I recognize the truth of the, that. But how has it evolved? I think we're getting fitter. So they're having to come up with more complex, heavier, harder, faster tests. But that's also like challenging us to be better yeah. and is making what we do each and every day um, better. I mean, we've, we're, I'm twice the athlete I was three years ago, two years ago. The amount of things that we have to be better at every year like what? involves everything. Running, from running to swimming to gymnastics movements to, okay, we're throwing a dumbbell this year, so it's all, you know, completely whole new set of movements that you hadn't been practicing before. When we started this thing, I didn't know anyone who could snatch 300. And now it seems like if you can't snatch 275, you, I mean, which is, a, is freakish. In fact, I love going to these strength and conditioning um, symposiums, and I talk to a lot of strength coaches, and, and they, you know, they kind of poo-poo sometimes of our, my fitness. And I'm like, well, hey, this guy just ran a 10K and then snatched 275. Like, how are you guys doing that? The running thing is one thing that stands out to me because in 2014, I think, the, it seemed like the group of, mostly I, I just remember the men on the triple, was it the... Triple three, it didn't seem like the running was that impressive. Like we all, everybody kind of ran relatively slow. There are some people that obviously did great, but it just wasn't an aggressive run pace. And this year, the two running events that we had, I was blown away by, I think, what was it? What did we run? Like a 
five forty mile to the water or something like yeah. that. And you, you guys, guys ran. You guys women. ran. Sorry, you guys ran way too fast. Oh, for sure. And everybody <laughs> blew up in the water. For sure. I ran a slow first half yeah. and then finished second overall. And, and it was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you guys are running way too fast. Yeah. Stop going so fast. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys been like this your whole lives? So when I, for example, when I compare myself to the, the athlete cohort, my desire to train is like 90th percentile. Like I'm always down to be like, let's do it. Like what are we doing? Or, you know, like, oh, it's a new game, a new sport, let's go, right? Have you got, are you guys like that too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I felt like. Especially these guys. I felt like growing up, I loved the sports that I played, but I loved training for them. And it's like kind of weird because I was, I was very good at the sports that I played because I worked hard, not just because I was like naturally gifted. I mean, I was talented, but I felt like I had to work really, really hard to be that guy on that team. And I felt like out of all the things that I did, if you look at all the sports that I played growing up, and then you counted exercise and training as one of those sports, that was my, that was yeah. my best sport. And it just turned out that in 2009, I got introduced to it, and I was like, wow, like this is, this is what I love to do, and I think, just like anything else, when you love to do something, it doesn't it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like it's right. The people who are going to want to hear this are struggling to be moms and dads. We see you guys train and compete, and we're like, I want that. I need those abs and those quads, and I want to be able to snatch like that and squat like that. But I have this job and these kids, and I'm middle aged. Right? You guys are Formula One athletes. We should be able to take those best practices and help moms and dads and recreational athletes and aspiring fitness athletes and, and CrossFitters to be better so that we can actually make better progress in the context of our own sort of pedestrian lives, right? So we have the Formula One and then now we're, I'm the Camry, right? And I want, I, want to, I want to drive my Camry a little, a little better. So we're all here because we love Mark Pro, use Mark Pro. One of the things that we have seen is that it's a way of helping people decongest tissues, especially in training volumes. When people are training intensely, I, can, I know I can recover faster. But we've also figured out that we can handle more volumes. Has there been experience that you can handle more volumes if you focus on first principles like decongesting and movement? Yeah, and movement is always the best way to, and getting blood flow to the area is always the best way to promote healing. Active recovery is always best. Active recovery is always best. It's better than going home and sitting on the sofa and watching TV. That's why I love the Mark Pros. Like it's, it's, you don't have to do anything and it's actively kind of pushing blood through your body, through the system and clearing it out. Which means that you can, there are times where you can rest, right? So you don't have to be, it's 10 o'clock at night and you don't have to go for another walk, right? Right, that's kind of the happy medium. You can sit on the couch and watch TV but still be moving because you have the device kind of doing the work for you. Do you guys ever take full days off? Yeah, absolutely. And like you don't move your body? Yeah. Or do you go for a walk and do things like that? Yeah, I'll go for a walk. I just go about my Yeah, I'll do nothing life. consciously. How many of you guys work in a gym all day? I mean, yeah, I'll coach classes. So you're on I'll, your feet all day I'll moving demo around. Some, moving. Demo some I'm movement. moving. I'm not laying, yeah. laying in I guess bed. I never have a completely sedentary day. I think we're all moving around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you're all moving I, around. I, yeah, I, I don't think we have days where we just <laughs> So uh, Sundays, I sometimes <laughs> lay around Sundays and watch <laughs> Netflix. And, uh, but do you feel you. better? Yeah, I mean, do you feel better? I always feel better when I'm moving. I do feel better when I'm moving. Like, if I, even if I just get up and go for a walk.